I was the dramatic child in my family. And I would sing louder than all the other kids in the church choir, and my dad would be like, ah, she's so loud. Um, and, um, but I always knew that I felt better uh, when I'd sing up, you know, in the church choir and sing really loud, or when I'd do the dance recital, or when they finally got me into the dinner theater when I was nine years old. I just felt better about who I was. I was calmer at home because I was getting it all out when I was on stage and um, performing, and I was happy. Um, and so I knew as early as possible, oh, this, so, this makes me feel good, so this is what I want to do. I happen to like New York. Coming to New York as a as a 17 year old who had lived in Fresno, California, her entire life was um, it was culture shock in a major way, and um, I was completely overwhelmed with all of the noise. That was something that I wasn't used to at all. Um, in a way that was frightening and comforting, I found because at least the noise. Be there, because there was always noise going on, I never felt alone. I like the sight, the sound, and even the stink of it. I happen to like New York. I could touch a Broadway theater and instead of just reading about it, you know, in a book or seeing a picture of it on a television screen. I could go into a Broadway theater, I could see a show, I could see, you know, members of the New York Philharmonic carrying their instruments into the stage door and then, you know, get a student discount ticket or we'd sneak into the second act of a concert or whatever. I happen to like New York. I happen to love this First Broadway I show I saw alive. while living in New York was Anything Goes at the Vivian Beaumont with Patti LuPone. And... I had pictures of Patti LuPone on my wall growing up because of Evita. I had played Ava in a production in my, in my uh, hometown. And so to see her live on stage, um, I cried. I cried like, it's not a sad show, but I cried because it's like, there's Patti LuPone, and we're breathing the same air right now. And it just, it, it just jazzed me up in a way. And I was living, you know, across, I was going to school right across the street, you know? <laughs> and all I had to do was just walk across the street and there she was. Forget your trouble, happy day. Come on, get up, are here again. You gotta chase home. Rejection happens all the time in the business. I still get rejected all the time. On a, you know, you guys only see the roles that I do. <laughs> you don't know about the roles that I didn't get. <laughs> But there are plenty of them, and there are still plenty of them that are happening daily. It's, it's, so how do I deal with rejection? As a, a child, when I was, you know, you thickening your skin, for me, I always, I would take it very personally, and this is not my advice, take it personally, because um, nine times out of ten, it's nothing to take personally. But then I would say, I would get the I'll show them energy. Everybody loves a winner. So nobody loved me. I would use the rejection to improve. So for me, what I drive my agents crazy with is if I don't get a part, why? What did I do wrong? What can I do better next time? Find out everything that I can do to improve who I am um, so that that doesn't happen the next time. And as a result, you end up growing as an artist. So, you know, maybe that role was never meant to be yours in the first place. But, you know, for me, one, one role that I didn't get uh, in a movie that I really wanted it required someone to be able to play a piece of music on the piano that was very difficult. And so I pushed myself to learn that piece. And I didn't get the role, but I'm a better artist now because I know how to play that piece on the piano. So there's already, I already reap the rewards in a way. I've improved, I've, I've, I've improved on my craft. And, that's the ultimate goal, to continue to evolve as an artist. Maybe this time.